under loads of rocks to see where we could find convergence and uh you know of course you you are both on the quote unquote cyber side of the house right but we had our fantastic place secure conference where we brought people from both sides of the house together um nick uh, how has today been for you because i know you have been here for 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 a while yeah i mean that's the as with our conference that's the benefit of this isn't it is that you can just uh, pop in and out um, as and as and when your your working day allows. I managed to catch most of Javid earlier. That was good, and like I said in the chat, that was very very quotable. So I'm hoping that that can be made public. Um, I particularly liked uh, what was it, Ellie and Mike. I caught earlier. That was again. There was a lot. There was a lot of stuff Mike said. I completely agreed with. And then the next sentence, I completely disagreed with him. That was really thought provoking. There were some great, great panels there. And also just catching the end of what uh, Mike was saying. And just, do you want these people who understand all of security, but then you end up with generalists? Uh, or do you want the, the, the specialists who can talk to each other and explain the concepts to each other? Really interesting today. It is, isn't it? Well, let's let's take a step back because you know, many people will have been to the Play Secure Conference. I know Mike, for example, was on one of the panels, so Mike will definitely know uh, what it's all about. Um, uh, Dida, why don't you tell everybody what we have been trying to achieve with Play Secure and what it's all about? So, with Play Secure, our main aim for coming together as a group was to um, utilize a bit more of what we've seen. Um, like, let me take a step back. So when I think about security and physical security and cybersecurity, I keep um, going back to military because th those guys have been trying to secure the human lives um, and we have a lot to learn from them. And one thing they do is the drills, don't they? They immerse themselves into learning by putting themselves in, in, in difficult situations and trying to make decisions. One other thing is that with James, James is the um, kind of the founder of Play Secure. The idea came from him. I had lots of, I attended lots of his sessions um, where we were doing incident response scenario role plays, and it has opened my eyes so much. So we wanted to do the same thing for the wider of uh, wider audience. We wanted them to experience stuff and learn stuff. It's um, and that's what we try to do with Play Secure. And I think it opened my eyes a lot. Um, we had so many good speakers and sessions. We even had a heist and yeah, it's- Yeah, not a real heist, it was, it was a game. It was like everything was a game, but it does feel real. Your body cannot really distinguish uh, your, you, I was filled with adrenaline in those sessions. And I had to make really strange decisions at the point, but the benefit of it is the decisions I make, they don't have real consequences. So I can make a decision and see how it plays out, but there is no one really getting hurt at the, at the end of it. So that's, I think, one of the other key things with uh, immersive learning. And I, and, I, and I like that because what, what, I, what I guess with this immersive learning we're trying to, to solve, right? Solve for X. What, what are we trying to solve? We're, we're trying to say that an immersive learning experience is better to what exists. And, you know, physical security specialists, uh, one very, very clear analogy will be kidnap and ransom training. You have the miserable training, which is very miserable. And everybody knows how miserable that is. I've never been on it. I can't claim to have been through the miserableness. But I have seen the desktop learning, which is not so miserable, but yet may have some takeaways. Um, so, so, so there is a balance there, you know, where you've got something to lose and where you haven't got something to lose. Um, Nick, what, what is wrong with the current methods of training? Oh, wow, that's a good question. It's, there's not solely... There's not necessarily anything wrong. It's just that it they they can be better, and just 
I mean, especially with online training, especially with immersive training, especially with games and war games, it's cheaper and it's more malleable. Like it's it's easier in uh, training to say, well, that, that idea didn't work, but we won't play the rest of the game playing through that idea that don't work just to see that you made the wrong decision we've learned it's not it's not a game like you'd play with your family you're not around playing monopoly it's training so well okay you made a mistake let's rewind the clock 20 minutes and take a different action let's see how that plays out but within a game environment you get a chance to experiment a lot more you get to and you also you get to learn a lot quicker i think for everyone regardless of what type of learner you are if you're in a situation and going through it, you learn a lot more effectively than if you're just reading about it or if you're uh, seeing a presentation about it. So I think it's, it's not necessarily current training is bad. It's just that we can do better for, um, I think most importantly, for less money in shorter amounts of time. I mean, sometimes you need to um, you need to be there. Like the um, mobile uh, driver training, I caught some of that you were doing yesterday for Circuit Magazine. Oh, yes. Like, like just you can explain to someone the differences between driving to, I think I picked up some of the terminology, like an armored SUV versus a thin-skinned SUV. Uh, you can go through that. You could play a game with regard to how they drive differently, what you do in a situation on a board. Um, but then sometimes you just have to be in that vehicle, have the lights go off, hit the brakes as quickly as you can and see how it actually feels. But you don't just learn through being in the uh, driver's seat. You, le- you can learn the overall strategy on a board or through a dynamic kind of game. And that's much cheaper than all, dri- all I mean, maybe flying to a particular location and just driving the same vehicle day in, day out. No, you're, you're, you're right. And I did learn something just, by listening, which was mm. if, 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 if you've got, uh, everyone, everyone says that the, the di- dichotomy is in between an armored vehicle and a soft skin vehicle, yet there's another form of vehicle, which is a problem, which is an electric vehicle, because you're stopping and handling changes because that battery is in a different place in different vehicles. And it will really mess up with your perception of reality if you don't actually uh, try it out. So, so, so yes, even, even me, a little bit of desktop learning uh with with that and 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 thanks for coming along it was great to have joe otera and the vehicle dynamics institute yesterday um but i have some something to add if if i can so um for your question to make um what is wrong with the current um training methods there are many um researchers shown that it really doesn't stay with you like you do an annual training but the things you learn it doesn't even stay with you for six months so, but we also know that the feelings, the emotions, things, how, how things make you feel, those stay with you. So with what, when you experience something, the impact of that is much more um, permanent than, than an online training. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and, and, and I mean, even yesterday, we were talking about the fact that loads of skills are perishable. Um, and what will make them less per- perishable is if you not are traumatized by them, but exercise you, them. You, you exercise them. You, you've tried them out, um, which I think is good. So, 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 Dida, in cybersecurity, what's what is a what is a a really effective um, measure to, to 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 ensure that these skills don't perish? I mean, do we want you to go? off into a sock every now and again and and and, and try and uh you know be a defender what what is it what is it that w- would 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 work in a cyber context we can imagine a, a physical security specialist jumping into an suv and trying trying out some maneuvers but what about for you the scenario exercises they're they're really great um and you don't have to play the same role that you play in your day-to-day role when when you're given a random role and you have to think from their shoes it's a different ball game makes you opens your eyes to the bigger picture and how other things um, other players in different situations have to think what type of decisions they have to take care of so that also develops you in your own role um, to think differently think bigger it's 
I would say scenario exercises is definitely a really good and cheap way to uh, get your brain working. I like that. And, and I can see we still have uh, Hossam uh, out in uh, Dubai uh, in the audience. So, so Hossam uh, earlier today was uh, talking uh, about the importance of purple teaming, the importance of getting in the mindset of uh, an offender. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we don't want to be an offender, but, you know, get in the mindset. Um, it's, so, it's so important. It is, isn't it? And Nick, um, during the no, place to hold go... Hold on, can I, can I oh, just, yeah, yeah. just to carry on uh, the, the method of us answering the other person's question as well, because Dido made, so, made such a good point. Like, you can imagine in so many organisations, um, you don't understand why another part of the company operates in a particular way, or maybe in your part of the company, you're always frustrated that other parts um, expect you to do something that's really difficult and really complex, but seems easy to them. If they play your role in a game, it only takes an hour or two or an afternoon. But it's like you said, it's it's like, sorry, like Dida said, it's being in the other person's shoes. You can see why they make those decisions or you can see why it's, it's so difficult to come up with an easy easy uh, solution to a particular problem because you've played them and there's a there's such a difference between between being told it's difficult or having it explained to you that it's difficult and actually being faced with that decision say you're uh, as a security manager you're playing a game and you've got 10 problems you need to solve and you can see you've only got budget this year to solve five so you have to pick five and that's it there's there's no uh, there's no arguing your way around that it opens people's eyes up so much playing that that different role in an exercise. Is that not being done now? Not often enough. And contrary to all my much longer answers, I think that's it. Just, 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 uh, just not enough. Be in other people's shoes uh, more often helps an organisation helps individual parts of an organization understand how the all, whole organization works or how it doesn't work. They're mm. usually very limited when you do your like incident response um, exercises. Everyone's playing their own role. It's not giving that um, variety. So let's give people some concrete uh, examples because we used uh, Elevation and Privilege as a, 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 as a card game. Um, I think Elevation and Privilege could easily be, um, and please do Google Elevation and Privilege uh, for, for the physical security colleagues. Um, I think that could easily apply to physical security. Um, uh, Nick, can, can you explain to everyone what this card game is? Now, we're in a convergence forum, right? So, so it's a bit unusual. We're talking about card games, right? Mm. But it is highly relevant for convergence. T t tell us about the game. Well, it's basically a way for usually developers to uh, explain to each other issues with their software or to threat model issues with their software. So to think through how their software might be attacked before it's actually attacked and hopefully before they've even written a single line of code so that they can really plan far ahead. And I, that's a, I mean, that's, that's a real, physical security or has as has been pointed out that for um converged security as has been said in the um the parts of the talks i've caught this morning is just that it's all coming together and as we tend to discuss as members of the place secure panel is that as the sorry the board is that there's a single discipline of security then it's just applied in different domains um so elevation elevation of privilege is a game to make you think about the threats to your software before you write it could be used in the same way with i mean of course work. oh <laughs> <laughs> You're back. A, that was a great face pillow that was oh yes that worked you're on mute oh you're on mute and now i'm on as, mute. As, as is traditional as is as is my right yes um uh no no yeah uh, my my privilege got de-escalated evidently um 
I'm, I, I'm really interested in that game. A de-escalation of privilege. I think. I think uh, it's really good. Now, is is it necessarily a Microsoft card game? Because I'm trying to I'm trying to get people. Uh... It is. I was I was dis- I was no not disappointed. I was uh, embarrassed you asked me because I couldn't remember off the top of my head. I don't think so. I think it's open source now. Yes. So anybody yeah. can at least get a, if I remember rightly, please do check. Uh, you can just get a copy online. If you want a printed copy, then Agile Stationery, who were uh, mm-hmm. one of our sponsors for PlaySecure, if I remember rightly, or at yeah. least involved, yeah. um, print out a nice version if people want to look. But yeah, I'm interested in that for physical security or converged security. Yeah, Definitely. check the Cornucopia game as well uh, from all of us. It's uh, similar. And and Backdoors and Breaches, which I did find a link to. There you go. Um, so let's do something useful. Let's condense the entire four-day conference that we had into lessons that you think our audience want to know. We're talking about converged learning. We're talking about convergence. Um, some of the big themes throughout today, as have, you know, every year is, is convergence really going to turn data into a bodyguard? No. But is it more on the governance level that maybe somebody will know when to deploy data and when to deploy a bodyguard? Um, big that that topic we're still going for but anyway let's distill some of the lessons from the place secure conference so for me personally the most shocking session was uh, someone getting actually kidnapped uh, in oh, that a was foreign peter moore. country that was peter moore and yeah I, I i was crying when listening to that story i was really shocked and i felt like i was in their shoes even though that was not an exercise that was just a talk but it was very interactive we were able to ask him questions and he would very calmly uh, explain to us and i'm like i'm getting a panic attack here and he is so calm explaining all the things that actually happened to him so it's that experience um without being in that situation trying to um emphasize i'm um, not emphasize empathize with that uh, other person was really really um uh, valuable for me and also with his virtual reality aspect, it gives you a certain amount of control, which is what you can do with games. If it's getting too um, intense, or you're or you're not, if you're not learning the appropriate lesson, because the, the 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 point is to learn, um, then you can just stop it. You can pause it. You can. I mean, I tend to. I always like the golfing term mulligan, as you can just go. Well, that what didn't go the way I wanted. Let's. Um, let's roll time back 10 minutes. Let's try that again. Um, for me, that was an important part of what we were doing. And also, I think the most important thing we were doing was playing, as in, we don't know what the ideal solution is. We don't know, either within a particular context, we don't know what the best cybersecurity purchase is or the best layout of our physical defenses is, or we don't know if game suit this kind of training but rather than just um making a guess or making sure we we look professional and not too too much like we're enjoying our work um is actually well let's play some games let's see what happens let's see what sticks in people's memories let's see what gets people thinking let's see what people learn i think was what we took away from it i mean for example i just scribbled here down here and i'm sure it's something i mentioned before is getting the physical security professionals you know to play heist, I think would be really interesting if they're willing to. I mean, heist to explain is basically a, what can be known as a mini mega game. It's a relatively small 10, 15 player game where you talk through actions you would take in a particular situation. The situation being run by the equivalent of a a games master, a, a sort of dungeon master in role-playing game terminology. I think that with, I mean, as Dita said, that with professionals is not only really interesting to see from the outside, but also you get to learn, you get to make mistakes in a really cheap environment for the, for the cost of running an online meeting for a couple of hours. Yeah, you get to do trial and error mm. without the real consequence. And that heist, it was also very good because it had an element of luck. So you might say, 
I'm going to take this action. And then there is a, a roll of dice and you see how effective that action has been. And it might be one, it might, might be nine. And that is luck. And that's very much like real life. You do not know the um, uh, result without taking the action. There was a, I caught the end of, is it Mike O'Neill's um was saying just before we started about the just the idea of risk it's really difficult with professionals and it's especially difficult i know from anecdotes uh, friends have said in the military to say we don't know if this would work or not we're going to roll a dice to find out but that's um your real professional jobs aren't deterministic you don't know if you uh, deploy these many, this many people in this area that you will definitely win this conflict or the principle will definitely be secure or your firewall will definitely stay up so the introduction of risk and randomness helps um, people playing the game deal with the unexpected which is what you want from people if um, we know exactly how a situation would turn out we wouldn't need to train for it we'd just do it it's that element of the unexpected and being able to respond to it effectively that really sells games to me as training and is their big advantage over more traditional methods and you have fun doing it you're not <laughs> just reading and just uh, multiple yeah. questions because because when people hear the word play they might say oh, that's not serious um but but then but then you know there's an element of play being childlike not childish the willingness to explore and 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 so on, which which sets it apart. Um, and playing doesn't have to mean gamification. And there is there. Are, well, everyone will have seen some poor gamified training out there, won't they? Where basically it's a very mundane task that someone has put a little gold star metric against. Mm, it's gamified, but it's not really gamified. You know, Nick, uh, how can we combat? bad gamification oh um i'm not sure there's ever bad gamification i think there is definitely inappropriate gamification like in in training if you were to score people uh points for achieving a particular task then people won't aim to succeed at the task people will just aim to do the best at your scoring system and if your scoring system doesn't exactly match their objectives um, it's like um, in for IT support, uh, the aim of IT support is to clear tickets, to clear problems. So what organizations tend to do is shut all the IT, shut down all the tickets last thing on a Friday afternoon. They've hit their target. They've got no remaining problems. Then they just get lots of calls on Monday saying, well, this is still broken. I'll start a new ticket. So they hit their gamified target, as in you get the gold star for zero tickets open, but the problems are all still there. It's that kind of gamification you need to avoid. It's not necessarily bad, but it's bad in that context, definitely. Having the right incentives. Mm. Yeah, everyone loves a gold star. It's just you know. <laughs> I'm a millennial. I love a gold star. <laughs> I'll give you a participation trophy just for today. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it is a bit unfortunate when you see people with the very same award posting them online and you're like, you're like the 50th person with the very same award I've seen today. Uh, hmm, okay. That's a, that's a good example of bad gamification. In, in a way, I might, I might be stretching the term. No, because if I award, if I said uh, Nick and Peter, you you you've got a participation award. That's one thing, and of course, participation trophies. But it's when you see Nick, you've won the Security Personality of the Year award, <laughs> and Peter, you've won the Security Personality of the Year award, and then Pelham, you've and you're like, hang on a minute. No, absolutely. I like it. Well, um, Peter, what's next for Play Secure? I know we don't have an exact date, but what's what's next? Okay, we are working on a few things. So we had lots of good uh, contribution from the community that uh, has been built by, by the event. And we are uh, firstly going to be doing an, ar an event for more architects, um, bringing them together, the future of the architecture. And we want to see them fight like um, to come to a better solutions for all of us. 
because they're the smart guys. Uh, they can do this. That, that's the um, first thing on the agenda, but there are other items that we're working on in the background. I'll keep them as a surprise. I love it. Um, well, I'm conscious of time because I know that uh, you, 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 you're, both your time is short, but this is great. Uh, I love a conference within a conference. Uh, and I know we've got some of the Play Secure crowd uh, who've joined just uh, for the conference within a conference. So uh, I hope that's been beneficial to everyone outside as well. I hope this is a great example of convergence in that we could train together. We could look at what works and what is immersive. Um, I don't know why I did that immersive hand movement, but there we go. Um, great. Well, please give Dida and Nick and Play Secure a big round of applause. We Thank look forward you. to seeing you in the Thank audience. Thank you so much. And uh, definitely. It's been a pleasure. And thanks. Uh, it's, it's always great working with you. We'll see, we'll see you soon. See you see soon. You.